Good morning. Thought there was something else, but I'll get yelled at if there was. Um, confession. Pastor can, has to confess once in a while. These are not fun things to do. But I'm, I'm not all good, and I hope that I never portray that I am. Not that I try to be bad. I ran into somebody this week. It's, it's none of you guys, don't worry. And I don't like them. Anybody else got somebody like that? They hate me. They've made it known. They don't like what I'm doing. Uh, I don't like them. But you know, you put on this face and, and you nod and, and then the rest of the week is shot. Because I've got this in, stuck in my head. And now, you know, you've heard me say so many times before, we, we don't like people for various reasons. And, and you know, if, uh, you know, I better not use you. <laughs> I use you all the time. You know, you, you got somebody, you, you shop at the local store, and you go in there and something happens, and you'll never go back there again. You don't like them. And they probably don't like you. So this whole week, I'm struggling with this. And I know that God is just convicting me. This is not good. You are a pastor. You should be able to get beyond this. I stand up here and try to tell you people all week long that you're supposed to do better. And I am struggling. I can't get this person out of my head and what they've done to me. And, and God, get them. I'm just confessing to you. You guys don't think that way? Sometimes we say, uh, God's not working fast enough, so I'm going to do something to hurt them. I want to get them. I want them to pay. And we are not supposed to be that way. I did it. But then I got really, really convicted. And just tearing me up. So guess what we're going to talk about? How can I not? I think this is how God talks to us sometimes. You want something to talk about? I'll give you something to talk about. And he did. I do not like them. How am I supposed to love them? And, you know, it doesn't have to be this warm, fuzzy feeling. They've hurt me. They've said terrible things about me. So I did them too. Never happened to any of you guys, right? So I'm like, okay, God, you got to help me. Can't do this. You have got to help me. You've got to teach me and then use me to teach others how to do this. So I went right back to the beginning. You know, you get out the old study books and how they taught you to do things. Love your enemies. Yikes. This is not natural. If you come up here and hit me in the face, I'm going to hit you back. <laughs> Sometimes I kick. Can you believe the pastor just said that? And you guys are probably all better than me. Love your enemies. Where'd this all start? How'd this all happen? You want to go a little deeper once in a while, right? This is a huge, deep subject. And we, we're getting into this biblical hermeneutics. How do you interpret this? What's the, what's the Greek word really say? How's this meant to be done? So I got out my old books and here I go. You know, the first class I took was a 250 page binder, a three ring binder like this. And, and I'm struggling. I'm actually getting mad trying to find my notes. Now I don't like the book anymore. I'm burning that book. Isn't that natural? <laughs> Where did this all start? And last week I stood up here and said, you know, we need to be chasing the one. Well, I just got really mad at the one. Yikes. Help me, God. Help me. Let's go back to the beginning. You know, it was actually a law in the book of Leviticus. You're supposed to love your neighbor. And what they did was they started to twist this a little bit. Um, loving your neighbor was law. And you've heard me preach before about how the Pharisees would read between the lines. So if you love your neighbor, you're supposed to hate your enemy. And Jesus actually says, you've, you've heard 
to love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That's them saying that because they kind of read between the lines and they started writing their own law, their own rituals and stuff like this. And, and God really wasn't all good with it because they were putting things in there that really didn't belong. It says in Proverbs that we are told to feed our enemy when he's hungry. I would not have fed those people this week. I'm sorry. It goes on to say that we are not supposed to gloat when our enemies fail. I did that too. I wanted that. I wanted that so bad. And they want that for me. How can I love somebody like that? You guys good at this? I'll give you the microphone. Okay. King David actually writes in a, a psalm that um, he hates. This is before Jesus. There was hatred out there, and there's hatred today. And even though we feel it or we experience it, Jesus told us not to. And this is, this is hard stuff. Okay, this was right from Jesus' mouth. Okay, let's put up Matthew 5, third, or I'm sorry, 43 and 44. I'm just going to read part of it here. You have heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That's where they were writing things in, their own, their own words. But I say to you, love your enemies. Okay, so Jesus now is telling us, this would be a command to love your enemies. And if you were here a few weeks back when we were going through some of the Sermon of the Mount, he was, he was giving these shock factors. And this would have been one. This was going to turn the culture upside down because they were all about um, self-righteousness. And you could earn your way to heaven if you just did everything just right. And Jesus came along and he, he flipped everything. This part that says, you have heard, he says six times in his Sermon of the Mount. And every time it was taking culture and it was flipping it. So now he's telling us to love our enemies. How in the world can you do that? Boy, I wish somebody come up here and tell us. I really do. Because it's hard. And it's hard for me. And you could teach me right here, right now. Anybody? I got an extra microphone. You can be on YouTube and everything. Let's go through some of the ones where he says this, this very phrase. Uh, it's, it's all in Matthew, Matthew 5. He says, um, you've heard that you shall not murder. He says that you should not lust. Divorce. Oaths, retaliation, till he finally gets down to love your neighbor. Now, it's huge whether this is literal or figurative. So under the lust part, he says, you've heard that you should not commit adultery. But I say to you, if you so much look at somebody lustfully, you've already committed the act in your heart. So if your eye sins, pluck it out. Now, let's get realistic. He doesn't want you to pluck your eye out. Every person in here is probably guilty of one of these things. You have heard, but I say unto you, and he gives us this flip in culture. So when he says, love your enemy, let's, let's get right into it. Who is your enemy? Now, if you want to take the Greek word and everything like that, we can go through all that. But let me try to simplify some things for you. There's a lot of enemies. We have one huge enemy. Are we supposed to love him? Absolutely not. Okay, so who's my enemy? Somebody that's hurt me? Physically? Mentally? Emotionally? The, there's, I think I actually have a definition here of... Uh, 
and we don't need that one. An enemy is one that seeks harm and hates another, contradicts them, and fights the one that he is set against. Okay, so who's your enemy? If somebody comes up to you and says something you don't like, is that, is that an enemy? Now, if they got a weapon and they're trying to hurt you, is that an enemy? Is Satan an enemy? Who are you supposed to love? Who are you supposed to hate? When do I defend myself? You know, God actually tells us we can defend ourselves. But you're supposed to love them? How can that be? Nobody's coming up here, so I'm going to continue. He actually tells us. This Matthew 5, 43 and 44 continues. Put up 44. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those that hate you. And pray for those that spitefully use you and persecute you. Okay, he just told us who our enemy was. You see, that's a follow-up to him saying, love your enemies, comma, then he tells us who our enemies are. These are the people that we're supposed to love. How are you doing with that? Am I the only bad person in here? Am I the only one that struggles with this? You know, I'll even go further. I go down the road and I see somebody like that. No, don't, don't worry, it's none of you. And I see him coming and I force myself to wave. And they go by and I'm just tearing them up. You miserable. Right, I don't wish ill will on them. Well, well, the horns are coming out right here. No, no, I don't wish ill will on them. And you know what? They're not really my enemy. I just don't like them. They're not trying to harm me. Oh, but did they curse you? Yeah, well, then they're your enemy. Did they contradict something that you wanted to? Yeah, well, then you're, they're your enemy. Jesus is telling us who our enemies are. Boy, okay, so somebody does something I don't like, I'm going to have to take that, and I'm going to take it back home, and I'm going to dissect it to find out whether they're an enemy or not. But what if I find out they are? I'm supposed to love them. And if I find out that they're not, I'm supposed to love them. If they're my neighbor, I'm supposed to love them. Uh, I'm not good at this love thing. Now, now I'm finding out about myself as I'm studying how to love my enemies that I am not good. I probably am not worthy to stand up here. Anybody want to come up? Spiritual enemies, we have Satan. We're not supposed to love Satan. How far do you want to go with this? Let's talk about some of the things that we have in our lives that are really enemies. This is going to get ugly. Right? Your list as long as mine? I don't know why I'm talking to you. Your list as long as mine? No, you're all good. I'm trying to find somebody that's not good. <laughs> you have some protection because I can't really see. I see one. Now, nah, yeah, I'm just kidding you. Let's talk about some spiritual enemies that we have. Uh, beyond Satan and demons and all that kind of stuff. Let's talk about emotional enemies as well. Anger, grudges, hatred, envy, disappointment, revenge. Let me go on. I'm not good. I hope this is over pretty soon. 
It's just a confession session. What I found out was that I cannot do this without God. Right? Now I think I'm getting to the answer. God, you have to teach me. You have to continue to convict me. If waving is the best I can do, thank you. Help me to keep doing that. If recognizing my thoughts and shutting them down is the best I can do, thank you. Because it's not natural, and without God, you'll never think that way. If keeping my mouth shut is the best I can do, thank you, God. This is not natural. My own human spirit, and I'm going to call you guys out too, yours too, is in this constant battle with the Holy Spirit. I want what I want, and it's not good. And he's trying to teach me and make me better. And I'm not allowing it. I don't want to get better sometimes. I hate them. And I'll never like them. I hated God once. I was an enemy of God. He fixed me. And he can fix me again. Put up Romans 5, 8, will you? But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. An enemy of God is somebody that is against his purpose, against his will. That's us. We were like that. We were enemies of God. And he displayed the love that he has for his enemies by putting his son on a cross for us. How can I get better? He's the only one that can help me. He's the only one that can bring this to my attention. You need to work on this. I I wish it would just go away. I wish I could just walk around and just love everybody. Remember the hippies? They almost had it right. Except for that one part. Oh, and I think there was two parts in there, right? But the rest of it, they were all about love. They, they almost had it. So I want to be this guy that just walks around and, dude, I love you. Fix me, God. I'm no good at it. Because then I see him again and realize how bad I am. The quicker I think about it, I hope is some sort of gauge on how he's working on me. So, you know, if this this person goes by and instead of waving, I give him the international sign. You see, I'm not all good. You see, that wouldn't be any growth in me at all. If I wave a little bit and say, oh, man, I'm so sorry, God. That's some growth. Right? If I do one of these when he's going by, that's really good. But, you know, I can fake it a little bit once in a while. I go back to this once in a while when we were bikers. I, I got to this is hilarious. Chelsea's going to kill me. That's our oldest daughter. Well, you, bikers wave at bikers, right? We got bikers in here, and you, you're cruising along, and you kind of do one of these, you know, or, and I'm trying to tell Chelsea, you, you got to do something. Chelsea always rode on the back with Kelly, and Abby always rode on the back with me. And, of course, we're cruising. We're cool, man. Dude, dude I don't care what kind of bike it was, dude. And Chelsea would never do anything, so I had this little talk with her. How this is what we do, and we acknowledge other bikers, they're one of us, you see. Pretty soon, here come a bike, and I'm looking in my mirror, Kelly always rode behind me, and here's Chelsea. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, you need to be on a three-wheeler or something. <laughs> All of a sudden, she went from not doing anything to way the other way. I wish I could be like that, right? If I see any of you guys this week, I'm going to be right up there. (laughs) Dude, you're going to say, what has he been? (laughs) Little fun in church. 
How are you guys doing with this? Love your enemies. Who is your enemy? Really, who is your enemy? Are they an enemy of you, or do you just not like them? Regardless whether they're an enemy or not, we're supposed to love them. It doesn't always mean this. Sometimes it might mean this. And in your head you can say, I'm sorry, God. I'm still working on that. But the next time, we're going to do it again. We're going to put them before us. We're going to put our human, bad, natural thoughts aside for a few minutes that you're in their presence to show them some love. We can control this. I'm not sure I can control this. I'm not sure if God wants to completely change my brain to only think good of people, I will probably die. Somebody will come along and I'll think they're not my enemy and they'll stab me and rob me or something. We have to be guarded, right? But until he can totally change this, I'm the one that has to change this. I'm the one that has to change this. I'm not sure I can wrap my head around loving somebody that I consider an enemy. God doesn't think they're an enemy. He loves them. And he wants us to as well. Don't get in your head that this loving somebody is some touchy-feely, warm, fuzzy feeling. That's not the kind of love he's talking about. And we went through the four kind of loves. Agape love is simply putting somebody before you. Actually, the best I can do sometimes is to hold the thoughts in my head and act. Whatever it is. How do farmers do it? Larry, is that just nod and kind of point? Oh. Every time he says, you have heard it said, but I say, he's making a point. That whole Sermon on the Mount, he goes through, he's making a point. You don't have to gouge your eye out. He doesn't want that. He's making a point over and over. And when he says, you have heard to love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to you, love your enemy. He's making a point. Love always wins. We all want it. Sometimes I force it. I grab my dog and say, get over here and love me. <laughs> I love me. Why would you not want to be with me? Love me. We love ourselves. We want people to love us. But we just struggle terribly with doing it. We got these thoughts in our head that, Abby, you're probably all good at this. You don't have any enemies, do you? At yeah, one. She's not old enough to understand. <laughs> that means all of you. No, let's see, you're all good. You guys, yeah. 95 year old man, you got some stuff going on, buddy. You've seen things I don't even think about. <coughs> Can't we do a little bit better? Yeah, these messages, you see, you, you want to get into this deep stuff, right? So let's get in deep. Who's your enemy? How are you going to handle it? How are you doing with it? Do you think you can ever change? And how are you going to go about changing if you really want to? But, when the, but there's such a simple point here. Love never fails. All he's saying is, he's making this point. Try harder. I say unto you, love your enemy. What? It was a shock factor. I say unto you, if you've thought about it, you've already done it. Now pluck your eye out. What? These are shock factors. God was trying to make a point through his son, Jesus Christ, standing on a hill to a bunch of people to love one another. This is what you've heard. This is what I tell you to do. I don't have slides for all this. 
But I want you to think about it. If I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. How are you doing with that? We've all heard this at weddings, right? Today, I want you to think about it yourself. Let's continue on. Love is patient. Love is kind. Are those your enemies? Somebody that's not patient? Somebody that's not kind? How are you doing? It does not envy. It does not boast. Somebody boasts, you don't like them. How are you doing? It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, it always trusts, always hopes, always persevere. Love never fails. He just told you how to do it. We can try harder and we can do better. Keep captive your thoughts. It goes on to say, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. The hippies almost had it right. Almost. Boy, that'll make YouTube, won't it? I see some of you that know exactly what I'm talking about. You lived in that era. Can we just love one another? Even if we don't feel this mushy feeling, this warm and fuzzy, I just want to be with them all the time. Can we do this? Can we do this? Anything? Keep the thoughts captive and try your best to love because love never fails. Now you all know about the pastor. And I think I know about you guys too. Law was so hard. You know it was a law that you had to be perfect? God made law so hard that you would realize you cannot do it alone. You can't do it. If you followed every law the way it's written, you could have eternal life. You can't do it. Number one law, be perfect. Some of your versions might say, be complete. How's that working for you? The law was so tough that it should make you realize how bad you need Jesus because you can't do it yourself. That's the point. Love your neighbor. I can't. Love your enemy. I can't. I can work hard at the neighbor thing. The enemy thing's got me good. It hit me this week that the same thing I'm thinking, they just are thinking too. Right? Everything I thought of, they're thinking too. Get him, God. Make him fail. Make him bad. Take down the church. They're no better than me. That doesn't mean that I'm not supposed to work on getting better. And it does work better. Before, uh, you know, I kind of always claimed to be a Christian, but I I think I was doing it for all the wrong reasons. And and, uh, Abby here, she's on the back of my motorcycle all the time. It's just what we did. Uh, Kelly and Chelsea were on theirs, and Abby was my, my passenger. That's how we traveled as a family. And here's the kind of thing I did. Uh, You know, when we would pull up next to somebody and they thought we were cool. No, no, I just said that wrong. When they thought they were cool, I I actually raised Abby to do this. What did we do, Abby? Point and laugh. laugh. How's that for loving your enemy? That's how I raised my kids. But now we don't do that anymore. You see how Jesus works on you? It can get better. It can be a conviction. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Point and laugh. That's what we did. Somebody rev up. Abby's over there going, oh, Dad. I got chased for miles. Pull up to a stop sign. Somebody thought they had a really cool car. Abby's over there pointing and laughing. You see, I wasn't good, and I'm still not good, but I'm getting better. I tell her not to do that anymore. 
Sometimes that's the best I can do. Okay, so, so now when we see somebody that thinks they're cool, we do this. That's better, because Jesus helps me. I cannot do it alone, and you can't either. All you need to do is accept Jesus Christ and allow him to work in you. Allow the Holy Spirit to fight with your human spirit and let it win. If you can't control this, control this, control these, control the pointing and laughing, and he's working in you. Can we just try that this week? All week long, let's think about this chapter 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. You know when it gets down there and it says, keeps no records of wrong? That's what I thought about every time I'd see this person. Because I was keeping records of wrong. And so are they. But I'm going to try to do better. And I want you to be better than me. I want her to be better. No more pointing and laughing. Love never fails. How about we try it this week? Right? Love never fails. Let that song be stuck in your head the rest of the day. Wait, let me see how bad I am. I got, I got one minute. That better be a quick song. Let's pray. <laughs> Father God, thank you for allowing us to get together, and thanks for, for the conviction this week. Uh, I'm just in awe of that I was an enemy of yours at one time, but yet Jesus hung on a cross and died for me. That's amazing. And, and you know, I struggle just to, just to wave at somebody. God, just let that sink in this week for all of us. You loved us even when we were your enemy. God, help us along to do better at that. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen. I told you I'd get you out of here in an hour. It's about an hour. You can leave anytime you want. Let's not miss the Daytona 500, right? <laughs> Have a good week, you guys. Love somebody. What do you